G'day guys, how you going? Iska here. Welcome to my YouTube video. And in this video, we're finally going to finish this riser. We're not going to be doing the steps, but we will be putting flooring on this in a, and we'll be cutting it to the curved shape and um, we'll be putting the fascia on the riser. And uh, basically, <laughs> I don't know how many videos it's been. I think this is like the fifth video. But um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I've been thinking about it and what I had in mind, what I was going to do, I just can't do it anymore. It's just not going to work out. Um, and I'll tell you what I had planned in the next couple of steps because, yeah, it's uh, it sucks. So I'm kind of, you know, going to be doing this on the go. I'm kind of coming up to these problems and I'm having to overcome each problem as I come up to them. But um, if you're actually planning on doing a curved riser, you know, watch this video because you will save yourself a lot of heartache in the long run because these problems that I'm coming up, you know, I'm normally really good at, you know, foreseeing these particular issues, but um, it didn't matter um, all the planning in the world and I still wouldn't have thought of these issues that I'm going to be talking about shortly. But uh, what I'm going to do first of all, um, I planned on using my cardboard stencil to actually mark out on my flooring that's over there a curve and cutting that curve out and then putting it on here. But I'm not going to do that now. What I plan on doing is actually using this pine moulding that you see over here. I'm actually going to screw that to the front of this riser and I'm actually going to take a stencil of it. You know, I'm going to put the flooring over the top and use that bit of pine moulding as a bit of a stencil and mark it out that way. Um, and that way, after I've done that, I'll show you these other problems that are kind of rearing their head, ugly heads and, um, and show you what I've decided to do to overcome those. But anyway, let's get into it. First of all, I'm going to put this pine moulding on the front here with some screws and uh, go from there. There you go, check that out, that's our curve. That gives us a better idea of our curve. And I think I'm liking it. <laughs> I think I'm liking it a lot. You can see down this end, I was, um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I was too short. <laughs> so I just put a bit of um, steel here, just to um, extend it over. So what I'm gonna have to do is get something that's about 10 mil thick because remember on this particular joist on each either end I actually made that 10 mil too sh uh, shorter than the other joists because I'm kind of thinking ahead and basically the, the thickness of the carpet when it wraps around our fascia I'm kind of thinking you know what I'm saying so what I might do is actually just pack that out at the end so that that stands out a bit further as well but um that's our shape, that's our curve. It looks weird through the camera, but um, in person it, I'm quite happy with it. Pretty happy. So cool. Now, I'll tell you some of these problems that I'm coming up with. You know, basically, what you kind of think you would do, right, is you'd put, you grab one of these sheets of flooring over here, there, I, this, this flooring here is 800 mil wide and they are 3.6 meters long. 
Now, what you'd think is you'd just grab one and you'd stick it up here. You know, I think I'm having eight, uh, 80 mil overhang, so it has to come out to this point here because this is going to be an overhang. Lights and things are going to go there. So it has to come out here. So you would put it here, right? In fact, let me grab, let me grab this piece here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Normally what you would assume when you go to cut yourself a curve for a front curve riser is you would put this down here like this. Make sure this comes out to the very edge, right? Just like that. Now, check this out. Okay, so that's what you would think you would do. What I planned on doing is just throwing the, um, the, the, the cardboard template on and basically doing the line, etc. But if you have a look here, you can see you're actually cutting off to throw away a good chunk of this bit of flooring. And look here, it just gets narrower and narrower because it's on the curve. It gets narrower and narrower until, until, and I've already done this, you get to this center part and this much is over the joist. That is all of the joist that is actually going to be supporting the center parts. You can see I've got that line drawn there. Um, and that doesn't sit right with me. That's not good. You need it to be a hell of a lot, um, at least twice that much, I reckon. So that's my problem. That's what I'm kind to kind of um, trying to work out how to kind of get past. Now, what I thought, if, you know, if I had thought of this in the beginning, what would have been the best way to do it is if you actually kind of did, well, listen, I have basically, they're not 400 centers, but there's 400 gap in between each one of these joists. So if they were 400 centers, then quite possibly I could actually get that bit of flooring and turn it around so that it was going that way. And then I just do a bunch of, you know, pieces going this way. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, to be honest with you, that is probably the best way to do it. But um, even though there are 400 gaps in between there, it doesn't work out. It just, like if I was to get this, <laughs> you can see there, I can't actually run it that way because they're just not gonna work out. So what I've decided to do after a bit of umming and ahhing, let me just put this back. What I have decided to do is to basically do what I had in mind. I'm going to do it like this. It's going to be a lot easier to cut it in one piece as well. But you can see where it actually gets down to that much joist holding on to this um, bit of flooring at the end here. Uh, what I've decided to do, and let me have a look around, and I don't have a piece on me. I had a, let's just grab a piece of this. I've decided just to get some bits of framing pine and put them in there like that. Basically like noggins. So that they're all the way across there all the way across there and the flooring can also be screwed to that as well and that's the only way I can think of doing I hope you understand what I'm talking about there that just gives me a lot more support for that really feathered out edge of our riser so <laughs> Basically, my wall's not square, so I just have to slice a little bit off one corner of the edge, just so we can get it to, you know, fit in there nice, just like that. <laughs> I 
Beautiful. Okay. Now I'll just quickly show you, this is what you would think that you would normally do, right? You would just basically push the next sheet up and kind of take it from there. You'd screw that one down and then you'd do the next sheet and then you would do your curve at the end, your overhang. But the problem is, the problem is, um, basically, if you've got your, your overhang here, you don't have any support for where the, the, um, uh, the next sheet that kind of comes out here to connect up to it, you don't have any support, support where they meet. So you can't actually do it that way. I know I didn't explain that very well, but um, trust me, I've thought about this and yeah, there's just no way. So what I have to do is basically what I mentioned to you yesterday, and that is pull this out and basically cut the front in one piece and uh, kind of do it from there. It just means I have to make a patch piece for in the back there, but that's okay because the cool part about that is I can actually make the patch piece a little bit bigger, which means if we like, we can actually make the overhang a little bit bigger. And then when I've worked out my lights for underneath the, the overhang edge, I can actually reduce that patch piece, just narrow it down, and that will actually push the entire flooring back, which will make the overhang a little bit less. So please, yeah, it looks like I'm kind of dodging this up, but I've given it a lot of thought. It's not as straightforward as a straight riser would be. I can totally see why people don't do curved risers. There's a lot more in it than what you think. But um, we'll get there. All right, so I'm just gonna pull this out and uh, mark underneath there with a pencil, the curve line, pull it out and probably cut that curve. So the iron horse is prevailing. How cool is that? Can't believe this. Excellent. Love this thing. It's literally the best thing I think I've ever bought. 20 bucks. There you go. Turned out quite nicely. 
um, you can see where it's feathered. Now what I'm thinking, rather than using this as um, the piece that's going to be overhanging, because you're going to lose another 80, 90 mil if you pull this forward even more, so I'm going to leave this as my first layer. Um, fill in the gaps behind there, and then the next layer, we're not going to be running them that way, we are going to be running them the same way as the same line as the joist. Um, just talking to some of the boys online who have done two layered risers before, that's what they're doing as well. So it's actually a good thing. I kind of thought about that before I talked to them and I was thinking, is that dodgy running them two di different directions? And uh, apparently that's what you're supposed to do. So that actually works out quite well. So. The ones that are on top, I think, are go they're the ones that are going to be overhanging. Um, so we'll keep that overhang to a minimum. Um, yeah, it just means that there's going to be, you know, joins in the middle. But this stuff is really thick. It's not going to break when people, you know, step too close to those seams. But um, anyway, there you go. I'll keep going. Do this side now. There you go, what do you think? That's our curve, that's my front curve. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Now if you have a look over here, can you see it's got that, it's base, well obviously, there's a seam there. That just allows me to basically lift up from the riser from here, peel that part of the flooring back. Um, the rest of the flooring is also has also got the, um, the same join, basically on that um, joist. And the reason I've done that is because 
um, I'm going to have to cut down this piece of flooring anyway later on down the line when I decide to put like I haven't done my walls yet I still haven't got my plasterboard on my walls etc so I have to put the plasterboard on and whatever other kind of soundproofing treatments I decide to go with um, that's going to kind of um, pull that wall out I think about 40 mil um, I've actually cut that back 40 mil, but I know I'm going to have to do it again. So that's that's why I've got that, you know, join there. So I can actually just lift this part of the floor up very easily and cut all the flooring pieces after I've, you know, put my plasterboard on the wall. But uh, there you go. It looks great. Um, I have to basically now fill in that gap behind there to the existing floor, what we did in part four. I have to fill that gap in and uh, then I guess I'm going to be doing uh, the second layer and remember like I keep saying that's going to be running with the joists um, not against the joists like this is here so anyway that's how I'm doing it you know this is very very difficult to it's a lot more difficult than I originally thought it would be um, I tried to explain it earlier on in this video as to why but I guess you really do need to actually try and build a curved riser um, to see what I'm saying. I mean, straight risers are simple. It's so easy. I've built so many decks. It's just like a deck. But you put a curve on it like this. Yeah, it's so much more involved. But anyway, let's get back into it. I think I have to move these seats. Uh, take the carpet and the carpet underlay off to make sure those pieces underneath are sitting correctly before I lock anything in. So I'm going to tidy up around here and do that and I'll be back shortly. All right. Well, it's the next day again. And check this out. Well, we haven't done anything, basically. I haven't done anything. Um, so what I've, I've made a decision. I'm not going to stop you and show you every single thing that I do from now on. I'm not going to walk you through all of my problems. Um, I'm just going to set you up and just do this because this video will never end. I'll st well, listen, I'll quickly tell you the main issue that I have is, well, when people build risers, they always say you have to use liquid nails. Well, there's no way in the world I am using liquid nails. Like I've said in the past, if I can't unbuild it, I'm not building it. And people say that because they reckon it stops creaking and all of that kind of stuff. But what if you get a creak? What if it is creaking and you've glued everything? You can't actually get in there and fix it. So I think my motto is if you build it right the first time, then you definitely will not get creaking. And in fact, I do have a bit of squeaking, creaking, and that is basically over the, remember I cut, I chiseled back my retaining wall. You know how I, I chiseled this back so I could slide this bit of flooring over the top. Well, over here on this corner here, um, it's not propped up correctly so there's a bit of flex in that timber in that flooring and as you step on it it might go down a couple of mil and it's just rubbing against this black bit of form ply and you get this it's just in that corner there so I'll be peeling this back and seeing if I can kind of prop that up and make it solid as well as pulling these two pieces of timber apart I was thinking about even throwing a bit of this yellow tongue um, beading in between and uh, yes that won't that won't make that noise for sure but uh, that's the only part that's squeaking and for the last three three and a half weeks I've been walking all over most of it and it's been it's been perfect haven't had any issues so basically what I'm going to do is set you up I also have to move this what we just made here this front edge this lip here I have to move that back basically the thickness of this and um, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my camera up and do a time lapse of me doing a bunch of stuff. If there's anything uber exciting to sh tell you, I'll show you. But um, I think I'm just going to do that and uh, do a time lapse and come back towards the end. One thing I will be doing is the back sheet. I think the back sheet and a half, I will be actually running the same direction as these sheets for the second layer. And then I will actually turn them around and run them like a about this length I think and uh, see how we go and there's a reason for doing that I'll tell you all about that later but anyway let me get back into it and I'll see you soon
almost done almost there it's looking great um, this side of the riser is done um, you're probably wondering why am I doing this doing it this way well it just turns out that that's the way I had to do it right because it's a curved riser I keep saying that um, uh, it's just completely different than doing a straight riser uh, the best part is I've made this so that we've got that gap there and you're probably wondering what the hell why have you got a gap there well that's because now that I've got a gap there I can actually unscrew that first flooring board there and pull it forward to close that gap up which will mean we will get a nice you know small five mil gap between the flooring there and the form ply hence and well not hence um, resulting in um, no more squeaks no more creaks which is a cool thing but I still have to do a fair bit of work to that corner anyway but um listen I'm going to call this one uh, that's it that's the five videos for the riser I still have to finish it obviously I'm going to quickly patch that up in this video you'll be watching me do that but I'm not going to come back and do any narration um, yeah I'm going to call it because I've worked out I cannot actually finish the riser at the moment anyway because I still have to run electrical I just forgot all about this I have to run electrical um, which is easier to do in this state but to do electrical I actually have to tap into that wall in the back there um, and to do that I have to finish that wall but before I finish that wall I have to add the cavity sliding door and before I do that I have to finish the wall on that side so I have to finish all of those things before I can put the second layer on my riser but that's okay we've got enough done to call this a riser I reckon so yeah I think it looks amazing I really do I am actually now once I've patched this up I am going to put all my you know other sheets and offcuts that we're going to make up the second layer anyway I'm going to stick it up there put the carpet back on and the chairs so I can at least watch movies while I work on the back wall but um that's it that's it it's been such a long kind of long few episodes what five episodes to get this far it's crazy I will be doing like shorter you know um, putting all of this kind of footage in like a 15 minute type of video once all my cinema is done like a lot of the parts of my movie sorry like like a lot of the parts of my cinema theater but um oh hey I've got another four seats I've got more seats I've got another four seats so now I can actually make my seats like do all of the configurations and you know cut them up and cut and paste them into different type of yeah configurations but uh, that'll be another video down the line so thanks for watching guys you can watch me patch that up and um, I'll see you on the next one I guess please like comment subscribe and I'll see you on the next one